Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we are going to be diving into some more environmental tech and also finishing up a little bit more of Batania. So, I hope you guys are ready. Okay, so to start today's video off, let me do something that, um, well, I got a lot of comments about. <laughs> and I feel, I feel like a total idiot for, uh, for totally missing this, but let's just go ahead and get this over with. Let's just place that Eternalist Fuel in there. We're going to relearn that bad boy. And what we're going to do is in here, now we can place it in. <laughs> and what we should have is a bunch of Eternalist Fuel in here now producing that power. I, 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 yeah, basically if you missed it last episode, what I forgot to do was learn or to save the recipe inside the uh, transmutation table because you can't place something in here unless it is saved inside of your table. I didn't know that. I actually, I, that totally went over my head, probably because I thought I had already placed it in here to save it, and that wasn't the case. <laughs> but we got that out of the way, uh, so now let's get on to the main part of today's video. Ah, <sighs> good old Batania. Um, well, when we left off, I had just built this one setup. I have two setups now. They are maxed out at this point full, um, and the only thing I've really touched on is just getting the main structure of mana generation done. We really haven't done much else. So today's video is going to be kind of a two-parter. Um, we're going to use Batania in order to get ourselves finished, for the most part, with um, the uh, environmental tech. And you may be wondering, well, why? what do you need from Batania for environmental tech? Well, um, let's take a look at the Botanical, which is the only one we have not made. Um, the Botanical Controller. Not at. Let's do Botanical. Um, this thing requires course, a course flower. Well, a course flower is not the easiest thing to obtain in this pack. Um, you can get course fruit, but as you can see, we need to do mana infusion here with an alchemy catalyst in order to progress, uh, in order to, to be able to make this botanic miner. And I want the botanic miner just to kind of complete the set of what we're doing. Um, we're pulling resources completely from nothing. Um, and I want to also get the plants, wood, any type of material that we may not be able to obtain any other way, you should be able to do through here. And of course, you can see a list of the vast amount of things that we can actually gain through here. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot. All the Batania stuff is even gained through here, which is kind of uh, ridiculous. But I mean, just everything is gained through here. There's 49 pages. I mean, it's, it's an absolute beast of uh, some stuff that you can generate through here. But... Let's go ahead and get started. So one of the main things I need in order to get started in Batania and make that alchemy um, catalyst is, well, blaze rod. Um, there's a few ways we can get blaze rod. This is one good way of getting blaze rod. You can use deep mob learning, which we're going to get into deep mob learning eventually. Believe me, this is really useful early game as well. Um, deep mob learning is something that you could easily set up for this, but we're going to go a different route. We're going to go a route that you may not know is possible in Batania, and it's kind of overlooked a lot. And um, it, it can really help you in a lot of playthroughs because, believe it or not, a lot of pack devs don't know their mods all, all that well. So sometimes you can kind of find easy paths into certain materials. Um, and one of those being through Batania. Batania has a way of actually spawning a blaze, and it's pretty easy. Um, so let's get into this. We're going to need like bone. So all the, all the mob drop loot. Let's take this. And if you watch my, many of my playthroughs, I've done this before. So you see this fell pumpkin. Yeah. It's going to require some string, pretty much uh, one item from each mob. It's not that difficult to make either. And it's EMC able, which is even better. Rotten flesh. And last but not least, we need gunpowder. And then we're also going to need a pumpkin, which I think we have seeds. Pumpkin seeds right there. And so, yeah, we're going to need to grow ourselves a pumpkin. The easiest way to do that, which I don't think I have any. Do I? No, just the seeds. So, bone mill. We're going to bone mill this bad boy up. Uh, I guess we can use water temporarily. No, actually, I think a watering can will do. Should work just fine because we are gonna need at least one pumpkin to get this to work. Let's just go into one of our areas over here. We're gonna till off a piece of land. This should keep it saturated. We're gonna place this, bone mill it, give it a little bit of water, 
And hopefully, we'll get a pumpkin. <laughs> there we go. And that was easy. Stomp out our crop. Bam. Also, we're going to get our flight done today. The reason I made this flight, I had some people asking, why did I go with this flight when I have many other options? Um, and there's several options in this pack, and you're probably going to be surprised with the, the way I choose to go. But I'll explain in a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and take that pumpkin. All right, we've put it in the crafting table. And um, I'm, I just have my crafting table near this. Eventually, we should probably make like a crafting table on a stick, so I'm just, I don't have to come here all the time. But we'll go ahead and make that fail pumpkin. We'll save that. Let's get some iron bars because we're gonna need a couple of those and honestly we don't need this many pumpkins but i'm just going to use this as an example all right so right now we don't really have a sword let's get a sword iron will work i'll just use that as an example just to show you how easy this is to set up and you're going to place two iron bars one on top of each other and as soon as you place this on top it's going to spawn a blaze i'm not joking it spawns a blaze like and, and really, this thing doesn't drop blaze rods, so don't expect that. It does drop blaze powder. So, as you can see, we got a lot of blaze powder. That's what it does. It drops a large, a very significant amount of blaze powder, and you need to use that in order to make blaze rods. Now, blaze rods, in some packs, you can't really utilize it that well, but in this one, there is easy ways of compacting and making blaze rods. So let's take a look at one of those. I know one specific way, which is a compactor, which should probably be the way we probably go. Yeah, it looks like compactor is probably the best route, as you can see, because I don't think there's a crafting recipe for it. No, other than mystical agriculture. So a compactor is pretty simple as well, just for bronze, copper gear, um, redstone coil, piston. All right, let's go ahead and get some of that. So we definitely need a frame. Piston is something we need. I don't think I have the reception coils, do I? I do have a redstone reception coil. Copper gear. And bronze. So there we go. That should be everything. For a, comp or a compactor. So there we go. And we can save this for later. Just like that. Awesome. Um, I'm just going to give it some power up here. No big deal. Throw that in there. That's going to give us a blaze rod. Super simple. And that's just like one part of today's step, uh, the multi-step process that's going to be required in order to get to a stage that we really want to get to. Of course, there's going to be many things that's going to require blaze later on down the road, and this is going to be super helpful. So there we go. Let's go ahead and drop this in. Now we have a blaze rod. Nice. So now we really don't have to worry about too much more. Um, oh, and we even got a crate from that. How nice. Iron axe. A little bit of EMC, basically. All right. So we don't need a sword anymore. Sort our inventory just a little bit. All right. And let's get back to that catalyst. So we have the brewing stand. A little bit of cobblestone. That's super simple. Mana, living rock. Okay. I think I can remember this recipe. Mana pearl. Let's remove this out of here. Cobblestone. Because, we're of course, we're going to need to make some stands. There we go. And the catalyst is just going to require mana pearl and some living rock. In which we do have the living rock down here. Let's go ahead and pick that up. Like I said, I really need to make... I, I guess I can go ahead and do it now. So, crafting table. Well, we need this. And I believe it's a... Just a stick. Or maybe it's a sign. Crafting table and a stick. It is a sign. <laughs> Which I, I know we don't have, but let's see. We can make one real quick. Might as well get this done now. That way, later on, I'm not getting yelled at for not having this done. Like, why are you still doing this? Eventually, we're going to have our auto crafting set up anyways. So there we go. I'll put that next to my transmutation table. I put it in the center because I think it'll be easier for me to know where it's at at all times. And that way, I just, yeah, I don't forget it. All right, so the catalyst, we need some gold. Not cold, gold. And we should be just about ready to go, right? There we go. All right, so we have our catalyst. Now, a good part about this, we can just take it. Um, we're going to move a flower temporarily and lose a piece of dirt. 
place it underneath one of our um, mana pools. Later on, we might have a central mana pool so we can do this on, or a couple of them probably. Um, but what we can do, get some more grass or dirt. I don't have grass in here just yet, even though I do have grass um, ready to be thrown in there. Just not yet. I'll go over that in a second as well. So now that we have this done, we should be able to sort of push now towards changing this thing. Right. Let's take a look at this. All right. So something that we're going to need. Well, you're going to need to go in here and you need to buy uh, the chorus fruit. I've already purchased this. Um, I did it earlier when I was running through my tests and stuff. So you purchase the chorus fruit, 2,500, not that much. And you save that bad boy, right? You get saved in here. Um, this chorus fruit needs to be cooked. So, of course, we need a furnace. We need some way to cook this. We're going to turn it into popped chorus fruit. There we go, popped chorus fruit. And we can save the popped chorus fruit as well. If you want to eat it later on down the road, I guess you can. Um, it, it, I'm not going to be liable for the changes it may cause. But what you can do is throw it in here, and bam, now you get a chorus flower. And this is why Batania is so useful early game. You'd be actually kind of surprised at how useful Batania can actually be in a lot of uh, playthroughs. So, now that we have the chorus flower, we can save that, because the chorus flower is going to be used in the Botanical Controller. So we're going to need some lithrite. Super easy to grab that stuff. And there we go. We have the Void Botanic Miner. And this is going to be set up the exact same way as all these other ones that you see. I'm going to set this one over here next to our Botania setup. Why not? Um, kind of find the center location. I think that is this block right here. And yeah, we'll just go ahead and break this. I think at this point I'd have another axe. I need to get a multi-tool. Um, so, one, two. Technically this would be... Three, I think these are three high. Yeah, so three and then places on top that puts it at four. Perfect. And we'll just break all this. And all we gotta do is hit it with our assembler. And let it build. I have all the materials in my inventory for this, so it should work. Now it's true. Perfect. We're good to go. All right. So back in here, we'll grab ourselves a point and a crate because of course we need both of those. And there we go. We have the botanic one set up. So this is actually going to generate some pretty interesting stuff as we go. Let's actually con connect to our network and perfect. So these are going to run. Um, I don't know if I'm going to ever need to upgrade this. We could upgrade it. I have no issue doing it later down the road. All this stuff is pretty cheap. Let's take a look at some of this other stuff that we are working towards. Okay, so here we have. We have the uh, um, erodium. So erodium crystals, we have those. We might want to take those and save those because those need to be placed inside here to be learned. And on our other side, let's take a look at some of these materials that we're gaining because the resource gen from here is actually really nice. You can gain a lot of things that would take you a lot of other machines to get otherwise. Um, so we have grass, uh, mycelium, like these are things that you can only get if you have silk touch, uh, pot soil, um, ice and packed ice, which is really nice to have right now. Mica, which you can only get from this machine. Marble, a lot of other different ter uh, colored terracotta and things like that, which are super nice. And of course we get in stone as well and netherrack. So no need to go to those dimensions specifically to gain those uh, those resources. You can get them right there. Um, speaking of that, let's just go ahead and take the resources that we gained so far from here, and we can kind of throw them in. And yeah, we can just, uh, we can save them. So of course, living rock, let's go ahead and fill this inventory slot. And we just throw all of this stuff in, learning all those resources as we go. Awesome. And that's why this is so useful. So, so very useful. So another suggestion that I got in a lot of comments is upgrade your EMC production. And I don't exactly know what people are meaning by upgrade my EMC production when I've gone over what these things do. I am up to an MK10. If you, if you absolutely don't understand this, 
Um, I may have to, you know, kind of go over it or, or go back and rewatch some of my other episodes. Um, but I'm producing like 37 million EMC every 20 ticks. This thing is producing, this is in the billions, by the way. Um, we are like, we have 78 billion EMC that has probably just generated over the short amount of time that I have been working on this. So right now, if I was to collect these, I'm pretty sure I already have enough EMC to jump into the other tier. It's, it's kind of hard to, to, you know, wrap your head around this if you don't understand how EMC works in the first place. But if we, if we kind of burn these back in, we have 56 billion in there. I have green matter. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade this green matter, if I can, to a higher tier matter, which is uh, the next one up. I can't remember what the exact color is. But if we upgrade this to the next tier, it's going to give us lime matter. Okay, so lime. It looks kind of yellow, but it's, it's lime. We're going to store that. Then we're going to use two of these to upgrade our previous uh, MK collectors and relays. And this is going to take the green to lime tier. And from there, these are now upgraded. These produce even more EMC. And then something you can do, of course, you can learn these. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull out all those lime ones. I'm going to compress it because I'm going to basically, I'm at the point where I'm making the power flower immediately. Um, so I'm going to burn these, take two of these limes out, make sure to find the lime MK11s because I need six of those. And then I need a personal EMC link. This is going to allow me to make the tier 11 power flower. This thing produces 75 million EMC a second. It is a, an enormous amount of EMC that these produce. And I'm just slowly but surely gaining up the tiers. And actually I say slowly, but it, it is not slow at all. Um, I don't, and like right here, I can pull out a green one if I wanted to, I can pull these all out along with this, but I mean, this just, it, it just produces so much EMC. It's hard to even fathom. You can see it just going up. Look at that. That is like millions right there. Just going up like it's nothing. Like it's nothing. It, it's not even struggling. So yeah, EMC is something that is really not an issue. Um, so with that out of the way, let's take a look at some of our flight options. So inside my inventory, we have the band of mana that I ended up making. The band of mana, if you don't know, is just a mana tablet that is turned into a bobble. And then this bobble later on can be upgraded, and then this greater band of mana actually holds an entire uh, mana pool full of mana. The regular band holds a half a mana pool, so keep that in mind when you're wondering how um, mana is stored. Um, but take a look here. Inside of our shop, we have a few bobble options. You have the angel ring, right? That also requires 32 grid power. I'm going to kind of go over why I'm choosing the ring I'm choosing. We have the angel ring, 32 grid power. So we have to set up grid power and it costs 50,000 beast coins. We have the swift wolf rending gale cost 50,000. Um, also requires, um, EMC to be stored into a, um, I can't think of the name of the, the thing, but it requires EMC basically to be burned for this to work. Not something I really want. Um, I'm looking at other types of flight. We do have some armor options. Um, that we could buy, but it's also very expensive. The squid ring, it requires grid power, still five, five K very, very expensive. So when we go down, you might find something that is very, very, very minuscule and you might skip right over it. The fugal tiara. I am buying this bad boy. Um, this is the late game flight option from a And right now it has no wing variants, but we can add our own wing variants. And I think this is probably the most aesthetically pleasing flight um, that you can get in the pack. Um, the wing options are absolutely phenomenal. And I think I'm gonna go over a few of them. So for me to be able to show this properly, I went ahead and took off all my armor so that way you guys can see the wing variants and how they actually function. They are really nice. And I think this is gonna be a good example um, because not a lot of people actually take the time to see what all you'll see here. now. There will be one that is missing just because we don't have the Elven Gateway open. But once we have the Elven Gateway open, I'll show you what that one looks like as well. But as of right now, I have all of them ready to go. We have Nether Quartz, Smoky Quartz, Mana Quartz, Blaze Quartz, Lavender Quartz, Redstone Quartz, and Sunny Quartz. And as I said, we are missing the Elven Quartz, which just goes in an Elven Portal. Um, now, these all produce different looking Fugal ti uh, Tiaras. And the first one, 
Well, the one that we have right now has nothing on it at all. There's no winged, completely empty. When you put it on in your bobble slot, you will have no wings, right? Completely empty. So let's go ahead and change that. And we'll first go with this one, which will give us the flugel. The flugel actually gives you like angel wings and a halo. And I really like the fact that the wings actually flap and stuff whenever you use this mod. I mean, it is, it is something that is really, really nice. And this is why I love this flight. So it's very aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing. And uh, that's one way or one reason I like it. So remember that is just regular quartz. Now we have smoky quartz, which is going to give you the one winged angel. So if you know what this reference is from, post it down in the comments, which is kind of awesome. And as you can see, it is literally just one wing. And of course it flaps like all the others. Really, really nice. Um, so we have some other ones. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. Pop this back open. We have the mana quartz, which is going to give us the icy fairy, which gives you icy type wings. And of course these do not flap. So if you're looking to have non flapping wings, of course, cause they are frozen, as you can see that that does that. Um, then we have the blaze quartz. This is going to give you the Phoenix, which as expected is fiery wings. Very cool. Um, the back looks just about the same as the front. Next, we have the Lavender Quartz, which is actually kind of one of my favorites, um, which is the Black Snow Princess. So look at the <laughs> look at these enormous butterfly wings. These are something to take a look at. These things are huge, um, definitely eye catching. And I absolutely love these, <laughs> which is kind of surprising. Um, and then we have the redstone quartz or the red quartz, um, which is the Lord of the pits, which is sort of a fiery type devil, um, dragon type wings. And of course these do flap as well. Very, very cool. And last but not least, besides the elven, which you'll have to probably check out for yourself or wait until a future episode when I make them is going to be the mega ultra chicken wings. Yes, they're golden wings. Very, very nice looking golden wings. Now, if you want to know which one's my favorite, well, <laughs> to be honest, I'm kind of plain. I like the plain old quartz. This, I mean, it's just, it's just my favorite. The, the, the main one, the flugel version is honestly my favorite. Let me know what is your favorite. I kind of like the spinning halo. It has the most effects and it works really well. All right. So let's go over why I love this flight you see that there is a wing monitor bar on the side. I kind of just used one of it. Well, that is a monitor basically going, okay, you have flight open right now. It only lasts so long, right? So we do have a flight duration and it does use mana. Um, you can see my mana bar going down, but honestly, I don't with as much flight as I use in this sky block, I'm probably going to need it that much. Um, and when you rest, it refills. And also you can see we have a particle effect. Each wing I think has its own different particle effects. And then also if you hold down control while you have this activated, you get the super sprint mode like that, which can fling you quite a distance. And I just absolutely love this. And it's so cheap. That's what is so crazy. It's so cheap, requires very little mana to run and is probably one of the better flight options early game hands down. So with us kind of pushing more towards Botana, I think we can probably get pretty close by the end of this episode with getting at least our portal up and running. And it does require a few kind of grindy steps that we're going to need to take. Um, but most of those steps I can kind of do off camera and just kind of show you the basics on how they work. Um, no need for me to show the crafting process and I've done it a oh, hundred times, at least at this point. Um, so what I'm going to do, we're going to go ahead and, and make a few things um, to kind of get started. So uh, when it comes to Batania, we do need a couple of different machines that kind of do like this transmutation type um, mixing of items. And I kind of want to, one is a ritual. I think it's not ritual. What is it called? I don't know why I forget. I, I've done this so many times and I always forget the names of stuff. I, I guess because all the stuff that's in my head. There we go. Runic altar, not ritual of altar. So yeah, we need, it's, it's a very simple recipe. I don't know why I didn't even remember it, but, um, we need mana diamond. There we go. 
and we'll just surround that with living rock and we'll get ourselves a runic altar. Um, now the runic altar is very simple. We should be able to place it right in the center here for right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to aim just a few of my mana spreaders at it. Um, believe me, this is more than enough. You can run this thing pretty quickly with just one. And I want to do just one recipe and then I'll show you exactly what it needs. So we're working towards the Aglom agglomeration plate, if I could spell it correctly. So this is the Terra uh, terrestrial agglomeration plate requires these runes. We're going to be working on these runes. So a rune of water requires a fishing rod, sugar cane, bone mill, mana still, and mana powder. Very, very easy things to get. So fishing rod, bone mill, and sugar cane. That's the main thing. Then we need mana, steel, and we also need redstone or uh, blaze works. Uh, I think there's a few things that actually work in this, and we just need to turn that into some mana powder. Very simple. I just didn't, I didn't have any saved in here yet. So there we go. Then what we need to do is take those, those items, and just place them in here like so. And once we place the last item that completes it, it'll start. And we're going to see, look at all that mana flooded here. And you can kind of see the bar there on the right hand side, the actual rune itself filling up. Once it's done, we'll take a piece of living rock, place it on top, or just right click on there. And then we just right click with our wand, and that's going to complete that rune. So there are several runes, each one requiring different items. This one requiring nether wart. Nether wart is not going to be too difficult for us to get as our botanic miner is actually going to gather that for us. Or we can use a mushroom and an atomic reconstructor, which we have as well. We probably have it since you get it in loot crates anyways. I guarantee you. Yeah, we totally have it. We, we yeah, the, I figured we had that. Um, but that is one of the things that we're going to need. I'm trying to see nether brick. We should be able to have that. We totally have that. Um, mushrooms, we have access to those. Feathers, everything we should have. There's nothing here that we should not have. So, pretty nice. And then the mana one, which is another thing that you're going to need, the rune of mana, just requires a mana pearl and some more steel. So I have to make all of these so we can get that agglomeration plate made. So, I'm going to go ahead and get that done. So we now should have everything now that I have all of the runes nice and made up. I also have myself some lovely mana steel armor that I made. Figured might as well. Um, we're going to change up at the end of the episode, though. So let's go ahead and get this done. Now we need to make the agglomeration plate. I know it's a lovely name to spell, but I just do AGG and usually it pops up. We need a block of mana steel, some lapis blocks, and of course those runes. So that shouldn't be too difficult. Block of mana steel. And voila, we have a terra steel agglomeration plate. Now, I believe there, there is a mod that actually shows you this, this recipe, but I do know exactly how to make this multi-block. Um, I've, yeah, I've done it before. Let's get an axe. Doesn't really matter what kind of axe. Um, but we're going to break out this section here. Right in the center. And then we need to make a couple of other things. Yes, we got to make a few more things. I know. All the things. There we go. The lapis blocks, we need four of those. They go on the, the sides here. And then in the center just goes a little bit of the lovely living rock like so and then the agglomeration plate right in the center and that's a multi-block that is completed now we only need to do a few more things well one of those is make a spark so a lovely spark requires just some petals and some blaze powder and a nugget so blaze Nugget. There we go. And just some petals, which we have in here. Doesn't really matter what ones you use. Let's get our crafting table and we'll make ourselves a spark. Now, these are EMCable, which is wonderful. So you don't have to make a bunch of them, but I am going to use, yeah, let's see. We have four. We need eight of these or nine of these. So I'm going to do, I'm going to place one directly on top of that, and then I'm going to place one directly above each mana pole. 
and hope that they all they all should link up to this central one. There we go. The shawl should all be linked up. You can right click on here and see they're linked by right clicking on this one. And you can see there, it should all work. Now this is gonna be incredibly fast, probably the fastest you've ever seen tear still be made. But what you need is diamond or mana, pretty much mana everything. You need a mana pearl, mana steel, and a mana diamond. And this will produce tear steel. Very cool stuff actually. So what you can do is right click these items on the center plate here, and it's gonna produce Terra Steel. There we go. And it's probably gonna do it really fast. So yeah, because of how much mana we have and all these different things, it does take a lot longer when there's not as many mana pulls. Um, but that should have consumed a little bit of mana from each one of these sides. Um, normally it consumes a uh, half a mana pull worth of mana. And or it's, I think it's a half a mana pool, or it's a qu quarter of a mana pool. I think it's a half a mana pool. But anyways, that gets us Terra Steel. <laughs> this stuff's cmc -able. So once you get it, you're golden. Um, now, we got to use this Terra Steel to make a portal. So let's go ahead and get that started. In order to make this portal, you are going to need Glimmering Living Wood. You're going to need three of those. That's super easy to make. You're also going to need a core. I hope I have enough Living Wood. I should probably get some wood made up. I think this might be enough. Uh, it's probably best to, to get some wood over there anyways, because we're, we're running out of this stuff anyways. Um, so we'll pop over here, place down some wood, do our Batania thing, you know. <laughs> Perfect. Go back. That totally that scares me. I don't, I don't mean to do that. That totally scared me. All right. So we have that done. And we're going to use these last, basically I use the uh, three Terra Steel Nuggets. You can do this all with just one ingot of Terra Steel. It is super, super cool. Um, but we're going to need pylons. Now pylons are going to require, what is that, mana diamonds, but we're also going to need some of this as well. So Eye of Ender, two Eyes of Ender, gold, and diamond. Right, and then these just require, yeah, the base. Okay, so we should be able to make this. Oh, no, wrong diamond. Mana diamond. Trying to get this done as fast as possible so we don't run out of time. I don't want to run out of time, but we need these mana, or Natura pylons, and then we need some mana pools, which we should be able to easily make. A couple mana pools. There we go, perfect. All right, so we should be able to set this bad boy up. Um, the best place, I think, is going to be right here next to our flower. Of course, these flowers are going to go. These two flowers, anyways. And we're going to set this up right here. So the base is going to be the gateway. Let's place that first. Then we're going to have some regular living wood, which reminds me. I might need to actually just take hold of this living wood here. There we go. And break it. Um, and then we're going to have this placed just like so. These corner blocks don't exactly need to be here. So what we'll do is we'll remove them later. I'm just going to use them as building blocks right now. Our glimmering is going to go here. There is a guide, by the way, in the Batania manual. This corner block, by the way, is not needed as well. Um, and then we'll just go down here. Sorry, we got to go one, one more out. I'm already messing this up. <laughs> One more out, glimmering, more living, living. All right, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of these corners because we don't need them. And there we go, structure complete here. Now I'm gonna need to place the mana pylons and I like to do them right there on the corner pieces. Kind of hides these corners anyways. Place the pylons on top and now we need to feed this some mana. I'm gonna break this current setup that we have here and I'm going to basically say, all right, guys, I need you to link over here. Right? Because we have some, I have some work for you to do. I need you to fill these mana pools a little bit. And that totally should be fast enough. They should reach. You know, they lose a little bit of 
mana, but they should totally be able to reach. And we need to get these things filled up a little bit. Another quick way to fill these mana pools to get them to open the portal faster is to make sure this is in is sparing from tablet. Place a little bit in there. You don't need much. So kind of keep clicking on it till you see about how much you have. I want I usually want to have at least uh, one fourth of the mana pool filled. I'm gonna dump this in here. This is going to give me some more mana back in there. There we go. And yeah, I'm gonna dump this one as well. And that should give me enough mana to open this portal. And all you gotta do to open it is make sure you have, I don't know, at least, I would say an eighth in each one. That's all that really matters to me. I want a, at least a fourth in here. And then click this to open it. That's gonna open your portal. <laughs> nice. So the portal opens. It does use, as you see, a little bit of mana. It uses about a, oh man, I would say a quarter of a mana pool or close to it to open it. But while it's open, it doesn't use any mana until you start throwing things in. And when I say throwing things in, I mean mana steal. Of course. So as long as this is an even number, a divisible by two, you should get some lovely elementium. And this is what I want to use this for. Um, I want to take out, actually, I didn't get enough. Um, we are running a little bit low on time. But this is something that I wanted to make because this is my favorite armor and it's also a quest. Let's throw this back in here. This does use mana while this is uh, doing this operation here. It does use mana. But keep in mind those mana pools, once they get filled, we're going to use sparks, augments anyways on them later on. So they're not going to be affected too much when we do that. So let's go ahead and make this armor. We're going to make elementium armor. Oh man, this stuff is so beautiful. You'll look like a pixie fairy, which is exactly what it kind of is. It's like a pixie thing. There are some special things that you can do with this armor. And chest piece. And it really makes that fugal tiara shine. Look at there. Look at the fugal. We are now Batania bound. We do look super amazing. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, you guys know what to do. Don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, give this video a huge thumbs up. I really appreciate all the support you guys are giving on these videos. Anyways, guys, I will see you in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.